Radio audience, and again, we want to thank you for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth Broadcast. This broadcast is a live Bible question and answer program where you, the radio listeners, at any point in time, you may pick up your phones, dial the number 281-837-2222 with any Bible questions or comments you'd like to make, and we'll give you book, chapter, and verse for all of your Bible questions, and we'll listen to your comments as well. Before we get into our subject matter this afternoon, I just want to uh, let the uh, radio listeners know we had a, a baptism on this past week. I want you to, uh, all the saints of God, to please keep more. Marvin Codrington, in your thoughts and in your prayers, as he's a young man who just obeyed the gospel of, of Jesus Christ, okay? That being said, if you have your Bibles, uh, turn to the book of Hebrews chapter 7, and I'm going to read into you here in verses number 1 through verse number 12. Hebrews chapter 7. Verse number 1 through verse number 12. And while you turn there again, Javier does a phenomenal job, Thank our you. radio listeners, in putting all of our broadcasts via YouTube. Go to YouTube, put in the search section, Wilson Road Church of Christ. This broadcast, past broadcasts and debates uh, are left there for your viewing and for your studies and for your comments. And uh, we appreciate all of you and your support and your subscriptions. In Hebrews chapter 7 and verse number 1, the Bible says, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils, and verily they that are of the sons of Levi, who receive the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham, and blessed him that had the promise. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. And here men that die receive tithes. But there he received them, of whom it witnessed that he liveth. As I may so say, Levi also, who received tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. For he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Verse 11, If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron. For the priesthood being changed, there is made of a necessity a change also of the law. Now we're going to deal with this subject, who or why rather did God have to change the law? Why did God have to change the law? The law. Mm -hmm. At this time, Brother Ozan, uh, he will elaborate on the subject. He'll give us a running start. Brother Ozan. Thank you, Henry. Welcome, audience. Audience, this thought uh, in my heart uh, uh, to discuss the subject, and I, my brother Javier and Henry's heart as well, is because of the onslaught of information that's going rapid throughout the Internet and in books and have been before our time and will be after we're dead and gone. And that is, some of us seem to be confused on understanding it can't be any other way but Christianity. Amen. It cannot be the Muslim, the Dalai Lama, the Hindu. It can't. You may would want it to be. It is not spiritually possible because it cannot repair the problem. We want to share it through, actually, there are two laws mentioned in Hebrews 7. And we're going to show you the priest who's over the first one and who interacted as one of the priests in this first dispensation of time. Hebrews 7 1. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God. Now, did we see that? Who met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him. You'll find this in Genesis 14, this being the first dispensation. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. So Abraham gave a tenth part of all. First being by interpretation, king of righteousness. Now listen at this. Now it's talking about Jesus. I want you to stop for a minute. This is also the understanding of the name of Melchizedek. We understand that. 
But it's starting to talk about Jesus. And that's why in many of your Bibles, you'll find King Capitalized. Because the translator knows, oh, this is talking about the man named Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now watch what happens. It says, and after that also, King of Salem, which is ancient Jerusalem, which is King of Peace. And truly, they that are of the sons of Levi, who received the office of the priesthood, this is Aaron's sons, or what we call the Aaronic priesthood, which has only to do with the Mosaical law, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law. Now notice, this isn't tithes according to Abraham giving to Melchizedek. This is the law of Moses. That is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. Why is this ironic? Because they said, okay, they're coming from Abraham, and you're thinking, shouldn't they be giving tithes to us? No, because there's a new priesthood. Listen, and you would have to ask yourself, then why in the world, as we're asking the question, does God change the very first law? Couldn't God get it right? On the first one, or does he have a three-strike rule and he almost struck out without Christianity? See, this is what you don't understand when we're saying you can't have multiple ways of being saved. This particular law cannot, under the Melchizedek uh, service and system, for Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who were not under the law of Moses, these are the fathers of Moses, and you have to understand, it could not do what the law of Moses could do. Right. The law of Moses is the schoolmaster, as taught in the book of Galatians. Not Abraham and Isaac. Those, some of those things aren't even being practiced in the law of Moses. And you have to understand, so there are things in that area that is right, but not that dispensation. And so now we see a changing from this priesthood of Melchizedek to a different priesthood, which is Aaronic priesthood, under the law of Moses. Well, Moses consecrates Aaron, his sons, and all born after them through consecrating a father, Aaron. Now, verse 6. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham. Now listen, the descent of Melchizedek is not counted with Aaron's priesthood. What is he doing getting time? Because he's in a different system of worship. Please listen, audience. And it's going to be uploaded by Brother Frizz for free. And you can listen to it forever. And you have to look at what we're saying because we're reading line by line. And blessed him that had the promises. So this Melchizedek is so great that Hebrew writer says, he blesses your father Abraham, who has the Levites in his loins, who you will be giving tithes to, speaking to the Hebrews who are now Christians. And this letter also can be delivered to Hebrews who are not Christians, so they can understand why they're in the wrong system of study. Verse 7, and with all, all contradictions, there's no contradiction here, the less is blessed of the better. You never find the individual who is less blessing the better. There's no such thing. The better blesses the less. So he's saying Melchizedek priesthood is even greater, listen to this audience, I beg you, than Aaron. Because it's before and Aaron is in the loins of Abraham paying tithe to this great man. This is why Christ's style, his pattern, of service is like Melchizedek. Why? Because he's the greater of the priesthood. He doesn't pick the lesser priesthood, Aaron. He picks the greater the pattern, his son. He doesn't do as Melchizedek receiving tithes because he never functions like that when he's on the earth. But he is like Melchizedek. Why? He is personally selected by God. Do y'all hear me on that? Person is selected by God, as was Aaron, but person is selected, and it's not through lineage. He picks him, and this is what he does for Christ. Verse 8, and here, men that did receive tithes, but there he received them, of whom it is witness that he liveth. And as I may say, so say, Levi also, who received tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. That's a statement I've been repeating. Look at verse 10. 
For he was yet in the laws of his father when Melchizedek met him. That's the text, verse 11. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priest, and this is the argument, why did God have to change the law of Moses? Right. Here's the explanation. Audience, don't you love to have an answer read from you from your father and not some want to be God like a man like me? Why do you not embrace what we do and feast off it and be baptized to be saved? That's what he says in verse 11. If that for perfection were about the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law. Now there it is. What further need was there that another priest should rise after all Melchizedek? What do we need Jesus for? Amen. We have Melchizedek. We've got Aaron. It's the schoolmaster getting us prepared. It's the law that God says, okay, you know, this is coming between me and you. What do we need another guy for? Let the Bible tell you why. <laughs> And not be called after the order of Aaron. Why is that there? Glad you asked. For the priesthood being changed, that is made of necessity a change also of the law. Now listen, audience, listen, please. Let's look at verse 11 again. You've got to drive this home, and I'm done. If that for perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, and it's not, for under it the people received the law, what further need was that? That's what he's asking, rhetorically, that another priest should rise after or according to the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron. If we need a repair job, why not say, okay, we're just going to make Jesus come from the Levites and he's going to be a priest, but he's going to be different. He can be born of the lineage of Aaron. He's just going to be different. It's going to bring something new. Listen, audience, my friends, it can't be done. The whole law must be nailed to the cross. This system of priesthood and a new high priest who has nothing to do with Aaron and therefore will not bring you the law. He will bring the New Testament. This is the only way. It's not the best way. It's the only way. Amen. And he says in verse 12, for or because, that's what for means, the priesthood being changed. So the priesthood's changed because he's not going to use Aaron's people. He's going to use his son, Jesus, that has made of a necessity a change also of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaining to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance to the altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude, see that's the word similitude, like Melchizedek, there arises another priest who is made not after the law of carnal commandment, but after the power of an innocent life. Listen, this is beautiful, audience. You got to get it. God be praised. Yeah. Jesus doesn't just pop to the priesthood because I'm one of Aaron's boys. He pops to the priesthood, listen, because he is everlasting. He does not die. He is deity. And some of you can't handle that. You can't. Because you cannot accept he was better than you and me. And he was a real man too. And that kills you because we've been lying to God. We just can't do it, Father. Pray. Help us. Help us, oh God. And Jesus comes in, real man. You cut him, he bled. And you could kill him. And he proved, I'm better than y'all. But you know the blessing is he's saying, I can show you how to be like me. I'm not going to own it and boast and be above you in that sense. I want you to be like me as I was on the earth. You'll never be equal to Christ spiritually, but you can be like he was on the earth. And that's his desire. That's why he gave his life for that. And this is the idea. He says, how was he done? Verse 17, for he testified, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Listen, for thou is verily... A disannulling of the commandment going before the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. Now listen, and in so much as not without an oath, he was made a priest. For those priests were made without an oath, but this is with an oath by him. He said to them, the Lord swear, this is God, and will not repent, he will not change. Thou art a priest forever after all the Melchizedek. Now listen, these brothers got more to add to me. Now listen, some of you 
when you hear Jesus, Henry talk vehemently, saying Matthew and many scriptures, but I say. See, you thought he was changing a lot. Jesus kept his word. I'm not changing one jot or one tittle. You don't see the New Testament brought forward until you hear it from people like Paul, Peter, and the others. And you can't handle that. Some of you are so evil, you'll say Acts is not a doctrinal book. Hmm. You don't find a New Testament until you start looking in Acts and Corinthian letter. And that's why you're sinning against your own soul. Jesus never said one word to violate the law in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, if you find it, call 281-837-2222. Please tell us first. Post it on the YouTube site. Post it on my site. Post it wherever you'd like. And let us know what Jesus said. One thing different in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You will find his New Testament coming forth in the mouth of the side, and you can't handle it, especially when he's talking about mercy and grace. Now, the number called is 281-837-2222. Wonderful job, Brother Ozan. And again, radio listeners, I hope you were following along, yeah. paying attention. And if if you weren't, if uh, we spoke fast, too fast for you, go back and please listen uh, to uh, the explanation of what the Hebrew writers just said as we deal with this subject. Why uh, did God have to change the law. You know, why did he have to do it? And I want to go back, if we could, another letter uh, that was written here in the book of uh, Galatians, chapter 3. Uh, I, want to, I want us to understand something, that when we talk about tithes and offerings, uh, that uh, was under the law uh, of, of, as our brother uh, Ozan has just explained, the Melchizedek priesthood, mm -hmm. and it's also under the, uh, the Aaronic priesthood, under the, under the Levitical priesthood. That priesthood, listen to me, radio audience, has been changed. Mm -hmm. Men like, and the list is endless, Creflo Dollar, Joel Osteen, and the list I can go on and on. And the, these denominational churches who are trying to bind on you all, you must pay the tithe. Let me tell you something. They don't understand that the priesthood is being changed. Now, again, we just read Hebrews 7 and 12, for those of you who missed it. Hebrews 7 and 12 is very Adam, very clear that the priesthood, that priesthood has been changed, okay? Mm -hmm. And so you need to make sure you understand that. Jesus is the high priest, and Jesus is is now over a priesthood, and it was God, his father, that chose him. Mm -hmm. So now, what was the purpose of the law? Mm -hmm. Hebrews, uh, Galatians chapter 3, and just for the sake of time, let's start at verse 7. Paul said, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham. Remember, brother just spent half the program talking about Abraham in Hebrews chapter 7. Mm -hmm. And of the scripture foreseen that God would justify the heathen, that is the Gentiles, through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations uh, be blessed. Now, this I don't understand these Israelite united in Christ uh, buffoons who, who believe that Jesus, that the Lord only came to save the Jews, mm -hmm. you know, which they can't even prove they're Jews because uh, they definitely don't have a genealogy. But nonetheless, they, they, they're confused. When God made the promise to Abraham, his promise, as we see in verse 8, is that all nations be blessed. Has nothing. He wants all ethnicities to come to the knowledge of truth. Doesn't matter what your skin color is. Amen. Doesn't matter what country you came from. God made a promise to Abraham long ago that in thee shall all nations be blessed. That would include Jews as well as Gentiles. You know, to say that the law, let me say this before we go on, that the law was only for the Jews is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Do you know the law was in effect for everybody on God's green earth? Anybody who had a desire to serve the creator God uh, and, and they heard God's law, they had to make themselves susceptible to what the law says. They could proselyte into the things of God. Had nothing to do with, oh, it's only for the Jew. And see, these guys are so unlearned that they take Matthew chapter 15, the Syrophoenician woman, and try to make Jesus say, I didn't come. See, he didn't just come for the uh, the Jew. He just came for the lost sheep of Israel. Mm -hmm. it, that, that doesn't say that he only came to the Jews. It doesn't say that he only came for the Jews. Salvation started with the Jews. I, I brought Paul said that in Romans 1.16. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but it's for the Jews and for the Gentiles. But nonetheless, uh, unless they repent, they will find themselves in a devil's hell because God created all mankind in his image. Verse number 9, real quickly. So then, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many are of the works of the law are under the curse. For his written curse is everyone that continue not in all things which are written in the book of the law to, uh, to do them. But that no man is justified by the law, get this, in the sight of God. It is evident, why? For the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Like Brother Ozan said, you guys, you hate Jesus. That's really what it boils down yes. to. And I'd like to know where else you're going to go, who you're going to go to. You hate God's system that he set up. Amen. You hate you hate that Jesus is a high priest that lived forever. So you try to make yourselves God. Mm -hmm. Put yourselves in, in Jesus' place. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, God will handle you on the day of judgment unless you repent. Now, we have a call online. We'll go ahead and take the call. It's question or comment. The number is 281-837-2222. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Go ahead, caller. Doing fine, my brother. Doing fine. Doing fine. Doing fine. Doing fine. Amen. Well, God bless you. Well, let me ask you something before you hang up. Are you a member of the church? What church do you attend? What church I attend? Yeah, do you? I, I attend the church that Jesus Christ is built upon. That rock that he said the gates of hell is not prepared. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Well, well, God Amen. 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 Amen.
might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up under the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. Amen. But after that faith is come, get this, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Do y'all see that radio listeners? The letter kills. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, he makes it plain, verse 7 through 17, read it in your own leisure. He makes it very clear that the law was a ministration of death. Now we're on the administration of the spirit. Christ is law. What Christ has said. The church. This is where the spirit of God, we receive him and we live spiritually now. For as many of you, when did this happen? Look at verse number 26. For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Now notice he didn't say faith only. He said by faith in Christ Jesus. That means you're going to have to be obedient. That's something you're going to have to do. For as many of you have been what? Baptized into Christ. Mm -hmm. Have put on Christ. Do you see that, radio listeners? Just, talk, just mention that. This is the plan of salvation. You've got to hear the gospel, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized into Christ to put on Christ. Mm -hmm. And then he says in verse 20, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs, how? According to the promise. Amen. God Amen. has promised salvation through Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, the great high priest. He is sitting in heaven at the right hand of the Father where he rules. He reigns, and he has all power and authority. When an individual tries to go back to the law of Moses, to hold on to that for justification, to be right in the sight of God, you spit in the Father's face. Amen. You are saying, in essence, that Jesus and what he taught through the apostles is not enough. And so you're trying to go back to something that the Hebrew writer has made very clear has been changed. So teaching tithes, playing instruments of music in your worship assembly, let me tell you something, it's sinful. Amen. It's sin because you have no authority from Jesus the high priest passed down through the apostles that gives you the authority to pay till you got to pay tithes or to play instruments as it relates to our worship to God. The number is 281-837-2222. Brother God Hosanna. bless you, Henry. Thank you so much. I want to read for you quickly as we got maybe two minutes left. Uh, look at Hebrews chapter 10. God bless Henry. I hope you go back, audience, please, and listen to this. And uh, we know the regular YouTube listeners will hear it. Uh, I want to encourage you to do so. Uh, if you will, look at uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Uh, and I want to pull right quickly into verse 4. If it's not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins, that's another reason why he has to change the law. You may say, well, why don't he just start it without blood of bulls and goats? Who's going to tell God what to do and who did he Amen. counsel with? It wouldn't have worked if he had brought Christianity first. It would not have worked. This isn't just something he was doing to be twiddling his thumb. This is the only way it can be done. He says, well, for when he cometh into the world, he said, sacrifice and offerings, thou would have stopped, but a body dies to pray for me. In the burnt offerings and sacrifice for sin, thou hast no pleasure. Listen to that. Then said our Lord, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Here's the explanation. Above when he said, sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings, for sin thou wouldest not, neither have pleasure in, which are offered by the law. Listen at that. Verse 9. Then said he, it's given an expository work by the right himself. Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. Listen, mm. God knows we're done here. Mm. He taketh away the first. Yes. He taketh away the first. Yes. He taketh away the first that mm. he may establish the second. Amen. Now, I don't know what your brethren are going to do in the church. Trying to make money, teaching tithes, or those of you outside the church, trying to go around using this, whatever you're doing, I'm going to tell you something now. Friend, we beg you both Amen. in the church and out, Amen. please repent and come to God before it is too late. Through faith, repentance, confession, and baptism, you'll become a child of God, and you'll be taught all things whatsoever the Lord command you. And he will be with you always then. We leave the faithful saints of Romans 16, 16, the churches of Christ salute you.
This was a blessing, brother. You know, and, and, and when we look at this, this is what gets me, man. This verse here, he take it away the further man step. So, you know what? Something you had said last week that reminded me of we gotta understand, brother, he never changed anything in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They get excited and say that. But I say, if he'd have changed it, I thought you wasn't changing a right. child of children. You changed the whole passage. So when and see, this is what happened. You remember how we had that battle with uh, Max Dawson and those yeah, guys that didn't right. know what they were talking exactly, about yeah. at Goose Creek. Right. How you had informed them, you don't accept the New Testament. That's why you won't be saved. Right. It's spoken. I remember, I never, I remember sitting there listening to Javier battling them. And I remember my light bulb went on my head. I said, that's it. They won't accept what Paul has said, which is New Testament advice, 1 Corinthians 7. They won't accept what Paul has said as New Testament law. They won't accept what Peter has said as New Testament law. Those are the laws that show changes. That's why I cannot take the wife back. back. Right. But yeah. if I can't be reconciled, they want to make a law there. Well, you're just stuck. Right. But he has advice. Right. It is better for you to marry yeah, than to burn. Exactly. But they, they don't want to take that advice. But they took Moses' advice, and they like to keep it. Right. It's okay to keep the divorce. Right. See, and we're not teaching that either. Isn't that right. ridiculous? Yeah, right. And that wasn't Moses' intent. Right. And the Lord said, because of the hardness of your heart. But he stressed and went right back to the law Moses wrote. But I say, except this for uncleanness, fornication, which is the word, you put them away, you'll be an adulterer or an adulteress. But they will not, see, and what they want now, we can't use the law. They don't have any advice. I said, what do we do? Well, then we can't take the wife back. If we're going to stick right. with the law, because the law cool. says that we're going to poison America, we're we'll poison the land, right? We're we'll poison the church, if nothing else, the spiritual church. Right. We're we'll poisoning it. So that's the, that's the New Testament law taught, and there's a lot of details. We don't offer sacrifice anymore. You never hear Jesus say don't offer sacrifice. Right. It is taught from Acts on. Right. Those that say that Acts is not, not a, a doctrinal book. book. Greg, See, that's a guy you run. Yeah, like Greg. Greg. They got to run from him. That, yeah, right. Greg Griffin. They got to run from a guy like that, yep. man. How, yeah. how low on the understanding level can you be to think that the Lord says clearly through the Hebrew writer, blood and bulls and goats cannot remove sin. And, and so the law is done away. I take away the first to establish the second. So the requirements of the law cannot be done. That's why we don't go on Saturday. That's why we're not doing right. that. And that's Amen. why we don't bring an animal. Right. It is because it's been nailed to the cross. And Colossians deals with it in detail. Colossians chapter, chapter 2. two. And this is the thing I'm not understanding, Amen. brothers. How, how these brethren are going back. But when you look at that, we're done, brother. We can't do this. Right. This is damnation to try and go dig back. this up. And then you got to live under all of it. Right. But there's James no Levite priest to bring the stuff right. to. Exactly. And what temple will you go to? It can't, it can't be the temple of the, uh, the Hindus. I mean, my goodness, that's no more temple. And they're never going to get it constructed again, you know. Yeah.